you're considering visiting Bulgaria and want to know about its world-class resorts, I'll share that with you and more. You're going to need a place to sleep and a way to get around. So let's start there. The best place to stay in order to visit Latasha is the capital city, Sofia, because there's a gondola that picks you up from within the city and brings you to the top of the mountain. More on that in a second. The most affordable option in Sofia will be a hostel costing you $10 a night. For a long-term stay, a furnished one bedroom can cost you $350 a month. Accommodation at Borowitz is the most expensive. The cheapest hotel costs $25 a night and price reflects quality. The most popular hotel, which is right on the slope, costs at minimum $140 a night. If Sofia is the cheapest and Borovitz the most expensive, then Bansko is just right. Thanks to it being a town rather than just a resort, it has plenty of more options. A four-star hotel on the slope can cost as little as $50 a night. Staying long-term during ski season can cost similar to Sofia at $350 a month. Transportation throughout Bulgaria is just as affordable. The gondola between Sofia and Vatasha is free when you buy a one-day ski pass. Getting to the gondola can cost as little as $1.80 when using public transport. If you're going to take a taxi, use the app Taxi Me. Borovitz, on the other hand, is an hour out from Sofia. Expect to spend $30 to $60 a day for a rental car. Public buses are far cheaper for a total of $3.35 one way. Due to how small Borovitz is, you can walk everywhere. Getting to the lift from the farthest hotels will take 10 minutes. Bansko is also easy to walk around. The longest walk is from the bus station all the way up to the lift. Despite that all being uphill, this is what I had to say. Yeah, 30 minute hike up, it's not bad. Taking the bus from Sofia is $17 one way. While only two hours, this price is worth it, thanks to it being a large charter. We'll talk about the slope soon, but there are two other topics you'll want to know about. It's common for ski gear to be brought on these trips, so all the public transport takes that into account. For those looking to rent equipment, Vitasha has one shop on the mountain. There are options in the city, but from the mountain, adult beginner equipment will cost you $11 a day. Borovitz and Bansko have plenty of shops in town. Beginner equipment in both resorts will cost you $17 a day. Once you're on the mountains, you'll eventually want food. Eating up at Vatasha is canteen style. Nothing fancy here. Food is hot and cheap. Borovitz has a stereotypical Apri ski options, but at prices you wouldn't believe. The restaurant with the best view is called The Terrace, and it's accessible from the slope. A vegan burger with fries was $13. Not cheap, but that's one of the most expensive meals in Borovitz. Most meals cost between five and 10 US dollars regardless of the location. Bansko, on the other hand, has the most expensive food when buying it on the mountain. In town, food prices are similar to Borovitz, but on the mountain, a simple hot chocolate cost $4.44. This dish at the barrels was by far the most expensive thing I had during my two months in Bulgaria. At $20.22, it was also the fanciest and with one of the best views. Arguably, a meal like this would cost at least double anywhere else. Full bellies, gear ready, let's talk about the slopes. Vitasha is the cheapest at $25 a day, but it also has the fewest runs. Best considered to be split between two sections, a beginner area and an expert area. The beginner section only has button seats. If you need to learn how to use these, it's best to do it here. The expert area is only considered to be intermediate. In the US, it would consist mainly of black runs. This downgrading was a common occurrence throughout Bulgaria, but what would you expect of a country full of skiers? Runs on this intermediate section went from the top of Vatasha all the way down to the mountain parking lot. And use this knowledge at your own risk. They don't stop the lifts for bad weather. As for Borovitz, it has three sections, a top, an east facing, and a west facing. The top is filled with fun little advanced slopes. This is a great place to appreciate the beauty of the mountains. Following, you carve down the east facing section. There are long intermediate runs that'll scratch that skiing itch. Best part about these is there's no one on them. Instead, everyone is in the west facing section. And when I say everyone, I mean everyone. Well, considered for beginners, it's the most dangerous. Combine the well-worn uneven slopes with overcrowding, and I recommend learning on the intermediate slopes instead. But most vacation here for the party atmosphere rather than the $42 day pass. Bansko, on the other hand, is for skiers and harder to be thought of in sections. It's essentially one large area with 
to outlying lifts. This large area has plenty of long runs that keep you entertained the entire way. The top has an unreal view of the town and surrounding mountains. As someone that can't afford skiing in the Alps, this was as close to that as I could imagine. From there, you choose between actual intermediate runs and more advanced intermediate runs. The real expert runs are at the bottom, but easily avoided. It wasn't until 1pm did the slopes become uneven on a sunny day. Speaking of sun, during the last week of the season, the powder was still soft and smooth. While things start to slow down in the middle of March, it's an excellent time to come out, especially with crowds at a much more manageable level. For $44 a day, it is well worth it. Okay, the verdict. Bansko clearly is a winner, says the best runs. Mm, but Orbitz is closer to Sofia has some really good runs and an Apri ski too. But if you're in Sofia, you should be skiing Batasha, right? Por que no los tres? Ski all three. You're already going to be flying into Sofia, so take a ride up the mountain. Sightsee in the city, and then see it all from the mountain. Following, take a ride down to Borovitz. You're probably going to be renting a car, but it's just as easy to get there by bus. Stay for a day or two, party it up in Apri ski. Finally, end up in Bensko. It's a village. You can actually live here. Plus, I mean, the skiing is the best, which is why I made a video about Bensko here. Must watch for anyone that's planning to live long term.